Hello and welcome to the Cannon Falls Library Watercolors for Peace craft program. So if you signed up for this program and you picked up a kit from the library, you should have gotten a piece of paper like this one, which is a regular piece of paper with some silhouettes printed out on it, and a piece of watercolor paper that has a quote printed on it. So if you did not get a kit you and you have watercolor paper and regular paper at home, you can find a quote that you like and put it in whatever font you like and print it out on your watercolor paper. I recommend that you use uh, water or permanent ink. So you don't want to be using an inkjet. You would want to be using a laser jet printer. Otherwise, we do have some kits available at the library. So you would just need to call to have to pick one up. And so this is what we are providing. What you need is two Sharpie pens. You want a fine tip Sharpie because you'll, you'll be tracing around some very finer edging. And you want a regular tip Sharpie for coloring in. You want a pen, ballpoint pen, doesn't matter what color, just not black because we're going to be making our own um, carbon paper. So uh, you will be tracing and you want to be able to know where you already traced. And you want just a regular graphite paper pencil because, again, we're going to be making a um, some carbon paper. You also need a pair of scissors. And you need watercolor paints. I have here the Crayola washable watercolors because they provide, offer some really nice vibrant colors. And they're easy to work with and they're also very, very inexpensive. I have some other watercolor paints as well that are pearlized that I may or may not use. And, and these I got from Joanne Fabrics and they, they cost a little bit more. I, I think this particular set cost me about $10, whereas the, the Crayola cost me probably about five. And you will also, once we get to the watercolor portion, will want to have two cups of water one is going to be for your clean or clean and one one will be dirty. But we are going to go ahead and get started. So the quote I picked is, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world by Desmond Tutu. And I think I want to do the rose. I think that would be really pretty. So this is where your scissors come in. What I want need you to do is cut out your chosen silhouette. And then you can move your watercolor paper out of the way like I did. You're going to turn over your silhouette, take your pencil, and you are going to make your graphite paper by tracing. Or sorry, not tracing, coloring. So you don't have to really color hard. That, that's one of the fun things about this. You just scribble as much as you need to. If you hear any sounds, they are my cat. He is in the room with me trying to cause trouble. Okay, so I put it up against the light. I have got it. I've got all of my edges covered. I think I want to do right here a little bit more. All of my edges are covered. So now I need to decide where I'm going to put it on my watercolor paper. I think I want to have it off center a little bit. I don't know what direction. I want to do it that direction. I think that will be pretty. All right, so I'm just going to put it down and then I want to hold it steady. And 
take out my pen, make sure it works. Yes, it does. This is a red pen, so I'm going to see my lines. I'm holding this steady. So I'm going to trace along the edges as well as I can. My cat is moving things. I am sorry if the camera moves. He's trying to get into a cabinet because he likes to do these things. All right, so you can see I'm tracing really, really nicely. So you can go ahead and start tracing yours and then you can put me on hold or on pause and I will meet you at the next step. Remember, do not move your paper because if you move your paper, then you are, you're gonna completely lose where you are. So see you at the next step. Okay, so I have just finished tracing and then look at that. I hope you can see I have a nice, little rose on here. So, that I didn't do an absolute perfect job, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna take my fine tip Sharpie and I'm going to trace over my tracing. And this one, I do want to be a little bit more careful because I can't undo what I've done with a Sharpie because it is indelible ink. It's permanent ink. I can't erase it. So I'm just being as careful as I can. Oops. I boo-booed. But then again, it's okay because this is my art project and it doesn't matter, you know? And sometimes Mistakes lead to beautiful um, Sorry, I lose my train of thought. Sometimes mistakes lead to some beautiful things. So I'm going to keep tracing. You can go ahead and keep tracing and I will meet you at the next step. Okay, so I have finished tracing my rows. I hope you finished tracing. And I didn't get completely on all of my lines, but that's okay. The next step is that I'm taking my regular tip Sharpie and I'm going to color it in. Now, this, remember, because we are working with permanent marker and we can't erase it, we wanna try really hard to color inside the lines which I'm trying very hard to do. I've done this enough times that sometimes I don't color inside the lines and then I just have to try to make it look pretty. But again, as I've said, sometimes mistakes lead to some really beautiful uh, final products. And sometimes mistakes are really not noticeable or you know they're only noticeable to those of us who did it so go ahead color in like i've been doing and i will meet you at the next step okay so i'm back how's it how's your project coming so I don't know if you can tell, but I have some edges that are just a little bit fuzzy. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take my fine tip Sharpie and I'm going to make some of my points a little sharper. And that should make some of these edges look just a little bit better. Because you know what? I think I colored outside the lines a little bit. There we go.
there. That makes it look just a little bit cleaner. So feel free if you need to, if you feel the need to, to clean up your edges a little bit like I just did. And then, because you want, do want to be pleased with your final product. All right, so the next step that we're going to do is actually add our paints. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at your paint and I want you to think about two, maybe three colors that you're going to use. I'm going to go ahead and fill up my cups. Another thing I forgot to say is that we do need a nice paintbrush. A nice thick paintbrush should be pretty good. All right. I have my paint or my 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 water and I have a nice thick paintbrush and I have here my paints. So, ooh, you know what I want to do? Because I have the word world here, I think I want to have like an, a, a kind of a globe kind of look. So my two jars are, one is going to be for clean water and one is going to be to clean my brush. So first one doesn't really, really matter. Just get your brush wet. And then we're going to swipe water all over our... Uh, our watercolor paper and I think you might be seeing my cat pretty soon. He really really enjoys it when I watercolor because he likes to play in my jars. So, yep here he is. So <laughs> I have my my papers wet. If you have painters tape and you want to um, make uh, kind of mash it down go ahead Hey, get out of the water, silly goose. All right, so I'm going to use some blue. I picked some blue. I don't want to use a ton of water because I want my color to be vibrant. And, whoo, look at that. And see how I'm just swiping? And then the, the water on the paper, hey, get out of there, you silly. <laughs> The water on the paper then or makes the, the paint spread out a little bit. All right, so I'm cleaning my paint brush and now I'm going to pick a green color because I think that would be really pretty because that's earth. I have a few different shades of green. I think I, here, oh, I don't think I wanna use that one. I think I'm gonna use a darker green. Okay, use my clean water and then I'm gonna Put some water in my green paint so that I actually have some paint and then I'm going to oh there we go swipe through some spots that the blue didn't go all right Now here's where, it's where it can get kind of fun and where I can make it start blending a little bit. I'm going to, I'm cleaning my brush right now in the dirty water. I'm going to put some in the clean water or put my brush in the clean water. And then I'm just gonna swipe through just a little bit in a few spots to get a little bit of clean water. Clean my brush a little bit, get some more clean water. You can also just try dabbing where the paint is nice and, and thick or really vibrant. You can also try moving the paper just a little bit just to see how it's gonna move just to get your paper, your paint to move a little bit. All right, and if you have any paper towels, it could be a good idea also to 
sop up some paint at the edges because it does tend to collect at the edges as, but as the, the paper bows up a little bit. And then I'm actually pretty happy with this. I like the color combination. I think I want to put a little bit more green over here. So didn't put my brush in the clean water. Put a, get a little bit more green on my brush. Kind of dip it through here a little bit. Make sure there are and no actually actual white spots left. And then I'm going to let it go ahead and dry. And it won't take long to dry, maybe 20 minutes, maybe a half hour, depending on how wet you got your paint, your paper. And then it's going to pucker up a little bit. So you can put the, you can put it underneath something like some heavy books or something to, to flatten it. You could also, after it's done, you could put it in a frame and you could hang it or you could put it someplace. But uh, the colors are going to stay nice and vibrant. And this is a fun and easy craft. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me. Bye.